The Night Lords Legion, once the revered Eighth Legion of the Astartes, fell to chaos and became feared and used terror tactics. Not that they didn't do this anyway when they were fighting under Conrad Kurz for the Emperor, but they are the poster boys of Grimdark. They are the poster boys of spiky bits on your Chaos Space Marines. If you look back to second edition, because I'm old and I know these things. I love the Night Lords. And ever since ADB released the Night Lords trilogy, which if you haven't read, you need to do that immediately. Stop watching this video. Go do that now. Thank you. I have had multiple iterations of my Night Lords army. And I thought with the new Kill Team box being released, it would be an idea time to show you how to convert some Night Lords and how to paint them quickly and effectively. So let's check this out. The Night Lords utilized armor, parts of armor, weapons that had been scavenged from the battlefields because equipment was in short supply. So using a Chaos Space Marine and some parts of some Mark III Imperial kit from the Horus Heresy, I decided to simply kit bash a Night Lords Marine. So all I did was I replaced the head, I put on a Mark VI backpack rather than the usual traditional Cow Space Marine backpack, put a Mark III helmet, a spare Forge World Night Lords shoulder pad, and cleaned off the marks of chaos as I prefer my Night Lords to be more renegades than followers of the Dark Gods. Again, leaning back into that fluff from ADB. The other Marine that I've chosen to do is based on a Mark VI torso. I've added in the more Chaos Space Marine traditional backpack and I've used one of the Reaver bare heads with the grinning skull bottom half mask to add a little bit of flavor to it. Now, to add a little more pizzazz, a bit more Night Lords flayed skin and aesthetics, what I've done is I've taken part of a Night Haunt model, chopped a bit of it off, and I will do a guide on how to use green stuff to make flayed skin and flayed skin cloaks. But what I've done is I've just used a little bit of the cloak from one of these Nighthawk models I had kicking about. And I've stuck that on using plastic glue just to, as flayed skin. I've also chopped up a Mark IV helmet, which I'm going to add to this guy's belt and just kind of stuck that on. And a couple of other skull bits. I've got a jawbone from an orc just to show, you know, the trophies that are very traditional for your Chaos Space Marines and especially Night Lords. Moving on to painting. I start by stippling on Scale 75's Abyssal Blue. Now, I stipple this on with a fairly big dry brush watered down so the paint is fairly thin which is going to show some gaps it's going to show that black undercoat underneath and i cover all of the model the next thing i do is i mix that about 50 50 with cantor blue i then repeat the process going over slightly less and more of just the areas that are going to capture the light of the model if you're thinking about the light is going to be pointing directly down on them i've been hitting the majority areas with that mix i then reducing the amount of coverage i go back over that with just cantor blue next step again hitting more of the raised areas and really only focusing on the areas that are going to be 
picked up by light. I hit that with a mix of Cantor Blue and a Latoc Blue. And then the next step, I hit it with pure Latoc Blue. Again, reducing the amount of area that I'm covering to pick up areas that are really going to be those areas that are going to light up the most underneath a light source. The final pass using a very, very small dry brush and very little coverage, I use a mix of a Latoc Blue and Althorn Grey. So not pure white, slightly off-white, just to hit those final areas. I then go in and I pick out the metallics. Now, what you can do at this point, if you want, you can add a little bit of battle damage, as I have, just on the edges of some of the armors, rather than using your traditional edge highlighting. I then use Bugman's Glow and paint in all the flesh, so the flesh on the trophies, the flesh on my marine's head. Edit a note. When I was painting the original models that you saw in the video, I absolutely hated how they turned up. So the guy that is now the focus of the video, I started afterwards and forgot to film the first part. For the skulls, I use a base of wraith bone. And all I'm doing is I'm picking out these base areas before using an enamel wash. I'm using dark wash by MIG. Uh, you can just use a black or a brown oil paint that you've mixed down with mineral spirits, but I'm lazy. So I'm literally covering the entire model using a crappy old brush with this enamel paint. Once that's dried, I use some clear mineral spirits, Q-tips, to then clean the raised areas off and focus in mostly on the top half of the model because that is going to be where the armor is more realistically going to be cleaner than, for example, the legs. So I'm cleaning off the areas on the head, some of the raised areas on the backpack and letting it sit in the crevices and in the bottoms of those shoulder pads where they're going to be in shadow. What this does is this essentially blends all of those stippled highlights together. It also creates shadow where you've got the dark enamel sits in those dark areas and you can move that pigment and those enamel paints whilst they're dry and using those wet Q-tips around to create better areas of shadow. Once that's then dried and you're happy with that effect, what you can do is reapply paint to some of those areas if you think that they're too dark, or if you think that they're too light, add some more of your enamel wash. I use pallid wish flesh to add a really rough stippled highlight onto the flesh. And this does sound stark, but trust me, it works. I'll explain why in a second. I then cover the skin areas on the head as well with pallid witch flesh. I do go a little too heavy, but again, we'll be able to get away with it. And I use pallid witch flesh to again highlight the bones and the skulls that this guy's carrying. Doesn't have to be perfect. These are skulls. You want to keep the layers below that are dirty and grimy and horrible to really carry off that effect. I then go and pick out some of the raised areas again with a very rough highlight on his chainsaw. I add in some extra kind of battle damage on certain parts of the armor just so those metallics really pop. The metallics that I'm using are Vallejo's Metal Color Gun Metal, which is a lovely, lovely paint. It's got excellent coverage and you can use it with a brush or you can put it straight through an airbrush and it works brilliantly. Now to get that kind of old skin slash weird 
shading to make our Night Lord's head look a little more interesting and to make that skin look old and bruised and horrible. What I do is I water down some Druchi Violet shade from Citadel and I apply that over our guy's head and over any of the flesh that's on that skull that's on the top trophy. What I then do is I go back over that with pallid witch flesh and a highlight you can see some of the Druji Violet below, um, but the Night Lord has got his traditional incredibly pale skin coming from the sunless world. And then it's a case of picking out details. Topping up some extra bits, so I paint the pommel of his chainsaw in a red, so you've got that nice little bit of pop. I paint that with piston red. I then use Caraburg Crimson as a shade and then pick out some of the extra bits in Evil Sun Scarlet. I pick out the hair in Scrag Brown. Fairly rough highlights, just picking out those top layers. But as well, as you can see on this miniature, using Mark VI body with a Chaos Space Marine chainsword and a couple of extra trophies from your bits box, skulls, Space Marine helmets, all of that good stuff. You can make some really nice late era Heresy Space Marines that you could then also use in 40k. Because I play Heresy, but I play 40k more. Now, adding in some battle damage, I've used uh, Admech Standard Grey just to add in some rough scratches on the armor and then gone and highlighted next to those lines that I've made with the gunmetal, just so it looks like the bullets have skinned past, they've taken off the top layer of paint, so it's the undercoat, and then some of that battle damage underneath as well. Moving on to basing, all I've done is I've used some Citadel basing because I have my Night Lords because they're fairly dark. I have them on a desert base, so the, the paint scheme really pops. Whilst I'm waiting for that to dry, it wouldn't be a Night Lord without some blood for the Blood God, so I apply that fairly liberally over his chain blade and then over the trophy on the top and where the scalp is kind of hanging off of the, the skulls that he's carrying as well. I then wash the base with Agrax Earthshade once that dries. Dry brush over the top of that with Karak Stone. And then I use MIG's Middle Eastern Dust Pigment and apply that over the base and then move that up the legs as well so it looks like they've been in a fairly long conflict there hasn't been a whole lot of time to be maintaining their kits you know they're in the middle of a battle they haven't just come fresh off the parade ground i apply that fairly liberally around the feet and then blend it up the greaves so it looks like they've been kicking up dust as they've been marching across the battlefield. All right, so I hope that you've found that video useful. And if you're looking for a way to make your armies look a little more battered, look a little more used, that you use some of these techniques Honestly, using oil washes and enamel paints in your army seems fairly daunting, but once you get used to it, it's really easy. The, the depth and the level of skill that you can go to using those types of paints is huge, but even just using them as a wash to help you blend in and make your soldiers, your miniatures look more battered and worn and more grim dark it's as easy as applying 
an enamel wash over a model and then cleaning off some areas. I will go into more depth at some point into kind of upping that level as I teach myself going through it because I'm trying out some stuff with some of my bigger models and what have you in terms of using weathering and different grim dark techniques but there's also a multitude of other youtubers you can check out like the feral painter like the grim dark compendium who have got that stuff on lock and i will be learning a lot from them as well so i do hope that you like the model i do hope that you will consider trying this out on some of your models and the fact that you can create a really effective looking night lords force using stuff that's already in your bits box using different kits smashing some kits together having a bit of a play having that fun that you can have playing about with chaos forces and i will catch you on the next one peace